So this is part B from the other problem. Um, what we're going to be doing is using the result from part A to solve this problem here in part B. Now part A said that my integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx converges. Okay, that's what part A says. That's kind of written poorly, but that's what part A says regardless. It converges. So this is kind of note to self. What does this say? From the following three integrals, choose one whose convergence or divergence can be proved by using the comparison test and your result from part A. So here's my result from part A. I want to compare my integrand to that integrand and make sure that I have the right relationship going so I can say, oh, now because these two integrals are related this way, they both converge. What I really want in the end, though, is I want whatever integral I choose to be less than the integral that I got in part A. Because if this guy converges, that means that all the space between that graph and the horizontal axis is finite. So if I can find a, an integral that lies underneath it, that means that this will also be finite because this is less area than what's underneath the curve of 1 over x squared. All right, this is the idea here. So usually what I do when I do a problem like this is I get out a, a piece of scratch paper and I kind of mess around with the three integrals that I'm given. So here's my, my piece of scratch paper, okay? You can tell it's a slightly different color, scratch paper. Now, if I look at this one, first thing I notice is that it's x plus 50, x plus 50 instead of x squared. All right, so I, if I just do a little test here, and I have to think about comparing x with x, and then I have to add 50 over here, but I want to square this over here for x greater than or equal to 1. Well, I'm going to tell you that this is going to be bigger. That's a dominating term. And so then when I take the reciprocal, this is 1 over x squared here. This is 1 over x to the plus 50 here. And this is always going to be greater than this one. Okay, so that one's out. This one here is interesting because it's x cubed and x, and I know that x over x cubed is 1 over x squared. So let's see here. If I think about this and I start with the bottom, x cubed equals x cubed, then um, x cubed plus 8 is greater than x cubed for x greater than or equal to 1. That's definitely true. And then if I do my reciprocal, I know that the sign changes. So we're doing okay. This is less, but it doesn't look like my integral. Now, this also doesn't even look like this. What, what I really need to do is multiply both sides by x. Now, if I do that, this is 4x greater than or equal to 1. That means x is a positive number. If I multiply both sides by the exact same number, and it's positive, that relationship will stay the same. This is only for x greater than or equal to 1. That's why this is so important, because in this case, it's very important. So now I have over here on this side, I have x over x cubed plus 8. And that's less than over here, I have 1 over x squared. So this one looks like it's the one that I want to compare to prove convergence. But just in case, let's take a look at this last one. So that's x squared, but x squared equals x squared. And then if I subtract 1 from this side, that makes that less than this side for x greater than or equal to 1. So when I do my reciprocal, that's going to be greater than this guy over here. So that's not the case that I want. Remember I said earlier, I want it to be less than. So it looks like the middle guy is the one I want to use. So now I just have to write up my proof based on what I have here. Okay. So this guy's out. This guy's out. So now I'm going to do my proof over here. So let's see. Let's start with uh, what I started with before. x cubed equals x cubed for x greater than or equal to 1. And again, where am I using that 1? That's this guy, that interval right there. And now I'm going to add 8 to one side. 
and that's obviously greater than this side for x greater than 1. And then I'm going to do reciprocal because I want it to look like this. I'm trying to get this left hand side to look like my integrand in question and the right hand side to look like this integrand. But now reciprocal forces me to switch those around. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by x. And the only reason why this is okay, this is okay for x greater than or equal to 1 only. If x is between 0 and 1, it works okay, but right now we know it works for x greater than 1. It doesn't work for x less than 1 for sure, or I mean less than 0 for sure. Now one more step <clears throat> I'm going to do here, um, which I didn't do before, but this side looks like the integrand I'm interested in up here at the top. Now I'm going to simplify this so this looks like the integrand that I used in part, whoops, sorry, in part A. So here we have this relationship. We built it up step by step with really obvious steps. You know, a lot of students just want to skip to here and say, well, obviously, no, not at our level. It's not obvious. So remember, most of the people who are going to be reading this, it's not so obvious for. So now because I have this relationship, I want to compare their corresponding integrals. Well, that's the whole point of the comparison test is to compare corresponding integrals from 1 to infinity of x over x cubed plus 8 dx we know is going to be less than 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx by default because if this graph is under that graph then that integral is going to have less area than that integral. That's the whole point. This is the whole point, not this. This is the point. Comparison of integrals, okay? Comparison of integrals. So I know that this integral is less than integral. From part A, we know the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx converges. Therefore, we can say, or we know, the integral from 1 to infinity of x over x cubed plus 8 dx also converges. That's how that works.